Hey guys, I'm here. And we are going to get this wig series going. You guys have been asking me, when will I start doing custom wig classes? That's coming soon. I finally have time, or I finally kind of figured it out how I'm gonna do it. So of course, I'm still gonna do my, my custom wig classes, like, cause the best way to learn is in person. One-on-one um, -on -one classes, group settings, stuff like that. But I could at least get y'all warmed up. So today, um, I'm only going to show you guys how to attach the closure. So in order for us to get through this series without having the videos like super long, I'm just going to focus solely just on one issue. So today it'll be attaching the closure. This is a 7x7. Seven seven. So... You could do this with the, the same way. You would attach it the same way, whether it's with a 4x4, four four, a 5x5, five 6x6, five, 7x7. Six six, seven seven. Closures only. So we're going to start with that. And of course, my brand, Posh Collection. Um, this is a straight closure. And I'm actually going to, when I do the wig, I'm going to use um, body wave bundles, the Malaysian mink bundles. But I just want to do a straight closure. Okay. No particular reason. I just have a straight closure and I want to use a 7x7, seven seven, okay? The only way to get your wigs to fit perfectly, and I'm not saying it's just to say this, you have to use the mesh dome caps for custom wigs by Posh Collection, okay? Um, as as y'all know, I always call the other brand the off brand. So if you're using the other brand, which I call the off brand, they are too small. They will get even smaller as you start stitching your closure and your bundles to it. So people who have bought these, they can tell you like these are the absolute best. Okay, they come in small, medium, large. Which the small is a twenty to twenty one inch circumference the medium is a 21 to 22 and the large is a 22 to 23 you never have to buy larger than what you need if your head is a 21 get the one that is 21 if it's a 22 get a 22 you don't have to buy it bigger because it already comes slightly big so once you you're done stitching on the wig unit now it's shrunken down to the perfect size okay so that's step one is your wig caps and you can purchase these at I love posh collection.com and the wig caps come with your three combs when I make my wigs I always attach three combs to it so you don't have to worry about searching for the combs you're gonna get the wig cap and the three combs um, we sell them in store and online mesh the mesh dome caps there's another brand out there that's mesh dome caps but they're too small and I've experienced it, wigs come out too small. I don't care how much you pull and tug on it as you're stitching, it's always gonna end up too small. Okay, so let's get going. So when I place my cap on, you wanna place the cap as if you're placing it on a person's head, okay? You don't wanna make wigs like just on a canvas head without placing it exactly where it's gonna be at, okay? So again, you want to place it, this is about where a person's forehead would be. Okay, so when I first put my caps on, I like to hand stitch them. The seam in the back, you wanna make sure it's centered with the seam on the canvas head. So you see how much room this cap already has? It already has extra material so when you start stitching stitching and it tightens up now it's tightening up exactly where you need it to be so you always want your cap to be a little bit bigger okay so now again this is a seven by seven and you could use this same technique with any size closure four by four five by five six by six seven by seven now When you are attaching your closure, you always wanna go about an inch in front of the cap. So you wanna take it about an inch in front. Cause what's happening is when you put on your wig, the band here is gonna 
be right here. It's going to go behind your ear. So the band is going to sit here. So when you get to this point, if you put your closure evenly with the band, now your closure is going to sit in your hair, on your hairline, because now you're stitching everything the same in the same row. So in order for, so when you put, when you put this wig on and the band stops here, you want to put that lace about an inch forward because you're supposed to glue the lace to your forehead the glue the glue is never supposed to be in your hair so you want to glue it to your forehead so always make sure when you put your closures on even your frontals that you are putting it about an inch in front if you second guess yourself always go further ahead and not less so if you want to do an inch and a half do an inch and a half but don't push it too far back or that's what's going to cause your wig to slide back. So in order to have comfort and not have a wig that's sliding back, you have to put this towards the front, about an inch to an inch and a half. That way it can just sit directly on there. Now, I'm going to put my T-pins in. Just to hold it down. So it should look like this in the front, where it almost looks like an M, but it should look like this in the front. And then I'm gonna put my T pins to hold the wig back. I'm just gonna put, I think I'm just gonna put one right here for now. So now when you are stitching your closure on, you want to start from, I always, so I always do two needles, okay? Because I'm going to do one side. I'm going to start on this side and I'm going to maybe go halfway back. Then I'm going to go to the other side, come back to this side, go to the other side. What you never want to do is just completely go all the way across because then what you're going to end up having is more hair out, more hair off the, the wig cap over on this side. So it'll be uneven. So say you may have one. So you may have um like an inch to the front on this side. But then if you keep stitching around, you may end up with two whole inches on the other side. So basically what you want to do is stitch halfway through, go to the other side and go back and forth. As you go along, you want to pull and tug on the, the closure so it will be nice and tight. So I'm just going to start on this side. And yes, you can stitch on the band. And so when I'm doing this, I'm going to reinforce it with the sewing machine so I don't have to get my stitches super close. Stitching on this side. I'm not going to pull yet because the other side isn't attached. And if I pull, then it's going to end up lopsided. So I'll wait till I get some stitching on the other side before I start tugging. And again, I'm going to reinforce it with the sewing machine so I don't have to put my stitches like super close. I'm just trying to hold it down right now. So I'm going to go about right here. So you guys see how this is in front of the band. You have the lace about an inch in front of the band. So now let's go to the other side. It's just kind of hard to do this from my phone when I'm recording myself. When I use a videographer, it's easier for you guys to see because they can move around. But I think you guys have a general idea of what I'm doing here. Okay, so I'm going like halfway. 
Now I'm just gonna go back to the other side. Now I can start pulling. What you wanna do when you're putting it, attaching it, is pull outward. Don't pull back because you want you don't want this to end up buckling like that. So you wanna pull outward, okay? So you can get this and that. And yes, you have to tug kind of hard. So that's why you wanna go back and forth from side to side. So I'm gonna show y'all how to attach the closure, how to reinforce it on the sewing machine and how to cut the cap from underneath the, the closure. That's what we're gonna do today. Go back to the other side. And I can't really say how often I'm gonna do the videos but the goal is to get at least one done a week. At least one done a week. And they'll stay up on my page. So if you know anyone else who's interested in custom units, then you can send them over to watch the videos. Let's keep pulling. Go back to the other side. And then you see my cap is like still like buckled up. That's fine because as you stitch your bundles on, that'll tighten up because you need that. You need that extra material. All right, I'm just gonna tie these together. Cut that off. Again, the, the mesh cap we're using is by Posh Collection. Gotta show y'all that. Let's take it off the canvas head. I always put my closure on first. I put it on on the canvas head. I've tried it the other way and that doesn't work out. As far as just knowing how much room you're gonna need, it's always best just to put the closure on first. Okay. So this is what it looks like so far. And then we're gonna go in and reinforce the stitch in and make it neater. So I'll be having classes where like, if you've never touched a sewing machine, where I'll actually like show you how to operate a sewing machine. Um, there will be classes where you have used a sewing machine before you just never made a wig. Um, and there will be classes where you made a wig before, just never on a sewing machine. Okay, so there will be several classes. So now, um, I'm not going to go into all the details of the stitching that I use. I'll do that in another video. But I have told you guys before, maybe up somewhere, I'm not sure, of what stitching i like to use um i use zigzag stitching pretty much but like the 
tension and all that stuff. We'll get into that. So basically, I'm just taking my, my cap with the closure. Starting on the end of the cap. Close down. And I'm just gonna go directly over where I stitched it at. As you go, you wanna kinda of push the hair out the way. Now, if you can go all the way around with the machine, that's fine because you've already attached the closure. But if you didn't attach it, I would recommend taking it out and going to the other side. Take it on the other side. Now this is my awkward side. Can you guys see? And what I recommend you guys do, just go ahead and get you a sewing machine. We're gonna need one for this series. And you, if you do already know how to stitch, just go ahead and do this first part. And just go ahead and start on your closure. And then when we do the next video, we just move along with that second part. But just go ahead and get your wig caps and get your closure and just at least get ahead on this part. But it's going to be a slow walk. We're not going to try to make a full wig in one day. Um, we're going to slow walk this. I think I'm all right. How much quicker you can get it done on a sewing machine it takes forever when you hand stitch so now the stitching is tighter where is it at? over here all the way around so now what i'm gonna do is just go underneath here if you've ever purchased a wig from me, then you'll notice that there's always this lace underneath your actual um, brown lace. There's always lace under here. That's to protect the lace from ripping. Like when we have customers come in and they want to look at the wigs and all that stuff, we just want to make sure we're not tearing the lace. So sometimes if you want to leave this on until you actually sell it to a client, you can and that'll keep the lace from ripping, especially if it's HD, because HD is very sensitive. But just for the sake of me showing you guys how to do this, we're just gonna cut this out. You could take your time, make sure you don't cut the stitching. You wanna get as close to the stitching as possible without cutting the stitching. And there you go. Your closure is attached. So your closure is attached. All right, so that's enough for this particular video. I'm excited about it. Again, a lot of people have been asking me when was I gonna start the series. I had a lot going on. 
um, with the salon reopening and everything. So now I am actually having some free time to get some things done. So I'm excited to show you guys about it. I want everybody to make this money. Um, I did really well during the shutdown when the the pandemic and COVID first happened. So it's like I truly felt sorry for a lot of stylists that did not know how to make um, wig units because it was a tough time and a lot of them lost money because they couldn't do actual clients. So in the event that something like that ever happens again, I want to make sure that I do my part in showing you guys how to do this so we all can pretty much get paid without having to be behind the styling chair. So be patient with me. This series is going to take a minute because there's so many details to learn about custom wigs, but I'm here to share my knowledge. I have no problem with that. If anyone has followed me on YouTube, you'll see that I have um, posted like tons of videos. Uh, well, dozens, I won't say tons, but dozens of videos. Um, I stopped for a while, but I'm back and we're kicking it off with the custom wig series, guys. So thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one soon. It should be next week. So practice on this part, practice on this part. So when we get to part two, you guys will already have this down pat. Don't be so hard on yourself. It's going to take some time to learn how to make these wigs. So don't be hard on yourself. Just keep trying. If one thing doesn't work for you, try something else. Okay. All right. See you guys next time.